This is a two-part video on concepts from the Boolean node. This video focuses on main concepts of the Boolean node where I demonstrate different Boolean operations and point out the importance of clean topology. The second video is a direct continuation from this one, completing the demonstration by feeding the Boolean fractured geometry into a dot net simulation, and I also compare the Boolean fracturing against other methods there are several ways we can cut geometry using the Boolean node. The most common way is using logical relations between different geometries, which uses concepts from Venn diagrams. For example, if I have a box and I want to cut a hole in the middle, how big do you want the hole to be? Where do you want the hole to be exactly? What shape do I want the hole to have? For example, uh, do you want it to be a circular hole? A rectangular hole or maybe even another smaller cube as a whole. All these can be specified in relation to another geometry and what I mean by this is that you want to tell Houdini that I want this cube and I want a hole that looks like this geometry inside of my cube. You don't really want to specify I want a cube 5 by 5 by 5 meters, and I want the hole to be a cylinder of radius, two Houdini units radius in the middle. Sorry, I mean two meters diameter in the middle. That is of 10 meters height. Now that is a little harder to specify. Let me start off with the geometry node. And in here, I'm just going to drop down a box. We're going to punch a hole through this box. Now, again, what kind of hole do I want? How do I specify the hole? Where is the hole going to be? So we're going to use, I'm going to punch a tube. So it's going to be a cylinder tube. Now this is going to be a polygon. Make it and then close the caps. So the ends will be closed, therefore making this cylinder uh, watertight. One thing is that the tube is a lot bigger than the box. So let's template the box. Come over to the tube. Oh, let me make the background darker. I'm not sure if that helped. But okay, let's start making the tube smaller. Radial scale. Okay, so we're, it's starting to fit inside the cube. Okay, let's drop down a Boolean node. I'm going to use the, uh, the butter and uh, knife example. I think that's... That's a better, that's a good example. Oh, cookie cutters. So this is going to be our dough and this is going to be our cookie cutter or you know what? I'll just call it cutter. So let's plug this dough, our dough, which is the box into our Boolean. Now the Boolean accepts two inputs, geometry A and geometry B. So let's just plug them both in first. Now let's take a look what we want to do with it. It's asking us, set a that's our geometry a that's our box we want it to treat we want to treat it as a solid that's good set b that's geometry b that's the cookie that's the cutter so that's the color that's the tube we want to treat that as a solid now what do we want to do with this geometry we want a hole inside this box so we want a subtracting the tube so we want to subtract. Put the render flag here. And now we have a hole in the middle. Now what is nice about this Boolean is that it automatically creates a watertight geometry. So the result. So let's call this here. Let's call this our cookie. Now this cookie is a watertight geometry and it is filling in the middle parts right here. And what I mean by that, in the Boolean, we also have features here that we can assign attributes to certain primitives related to how the boolean node cuts the geometry and what i mean by this I'll, i'm going to show it to you now i want to isolate this new geometry the new primitives that were created that's our whole that's the the whole geometry the whole the primitives making up the whole in the cube i want to isolate that those primitives that would be B, B inside A, I think. That should be it. Let's give it a try. Let's add a blast. Put the render flag here and choose B inside A. Okay, there we go. 
Now it's the blast is deleting all the primitives with this attribute, with this group. The Boolean has assigned this group name to the primitives that we specified, B that is inside of A. So this is A, this is B geometry inside of A. That would make the middle ones, these are the only primitives that make up the B, are derived from the B, are coming from the B. And the resulting geometry is obviously, it's still in the shape of a cube with a hole in the middle. So it's the A geometry. The B geometry is inside of the A. If you ever have any confusion what these groups do or mean, simply just drop down a blast and just try each one of them. That's probably the most straightforward way to find out what these groups actually are doing. What I wanted to show you is that this Boolean is creating new geometry to make a watertight result. Otherwise, if, if we just have like A minus B, if this Boolean wasn't wasn't smart enough, it would we would end up like this. Well, this really is a hole inside of the cube. Not very useful though, but the Boolean node is smart enough to add new geometry in order to make this a watertight geometry. Now there's something else I wanted to show you too. I'm going to drop down a clip so we can have like a, a, a view onto how it looked inside. So what the clip will do, it will just cut a little bit for me so I can see it. So this is the inside. Now this is what it looks originally after the boolean. This is the clip. Now we're just taking a look at the intersection of the geometry. This geometry here in this new geometry that was created by the boolean node, it looks a lot similar like this tube. So let's template this. Let's take a look here. Now these lines, the inside lines here, they are exactly the same as this tube. It's taking, the Boolean has taken the topology from our cutter geometry. That's our geometry set B. That's the tube. It's taking the topology and it's placed it into the results. It's used, it's reusing the topology. So not only is the Boolean node smart enough to create new geometry when we subtract shapes, it's also reusing topology from our original shapes. This is very clean. By reusing topology from the original shapes, we can keep the results much cleaner and make it much easier to be manipulated further down the line. The clean topology on the left has fewer points making it much more optimized for simulations. The picture on the right has a lot of unnecessary points composing the exact same shape. I also want to point out one more thing about clean topology. If I wanted to extrude one of the interior sides of the geometry on the left, it makes it it's super easy to do that. However, you're going to have a hard time doing the exact same operation on the geometry on the right due to the messy topology. Now the Boolean also has a different way of cutting geometry and it's by slicing it instead of using geometry relations. It's still sort of using geometry relationships, but in a total different sense. I'm going to drop down a box. I'm going to move this up a bit, drop down a box. And I'm going to use the concept of slicing bread or butter, cutting butter. I think I'll stick with butter. So we're gonna slice this cube instead of doing the Venn diagram concept. So how are we gonna slice it? Well, what do we need to slice it? We need a plane. We're gonna slice it using a plane or grid. You can think of it as a knife. The knife is flat and sharp. Now this grid is way too big, so I'm just gonna make it a little smaller first. We're gonna slice, this is our knife, let's drop down a boolean. And let's hook it up first. So A and B. Now we're gonna use the plane or our grid and we're gonna cut the cube just like how we cut bread in slices. We're gonna cut like a slice of it. It's gonna be cut in two pieces. Now this is very similar to how the Born or Fracture node cuts geometry or how the RBD Material Fracture node cuts geometry is that we're using the boolean node. 
So we have way more control over how we cut the geometry. Select the Boolean node, the operation. I'm going to choose Shatter and set B. That's this knife. It's going to be a surface. It's no longer going to be a solid. It's going to be a surface. Okay, let me now add an exploded, oops, exploded view. So as you can see, our box is being is being cut by this grid, sliced into two pieces. Well, this is only for debugging, so put that black. Another thing about the Boolean node is that it's super fast. I can interactively move this grid around, and it'll update. Uh, it'll update the cut in real time. Let me this around. So as you can see, it's it's updating uh, almost instantly. It, it's updating in real time. So this Boolean node is very fast. Let me throw down a transform node to make this a little easier. Let me come over here, uh, select the transform node, come over here, move the mouse over to the 3D viewport, press enter. I just want this widget so it's easier to control. So we can see how it's interactively slicing our cube and it's giving us real-time feedback. This is all nice, but how is this useful? How can this Boolean node be used to fracture geometry into tiny pieces for destruction scenes? We can throw down multiple grids and really start slicing this cube into pieces. The traditional way to fracture geometry is to use the Voronoi Fracture node or the RBD Material Fracture node. Now we can add the Boolean node to this list, being another alternative way to fracturing. The Boolean node, in fact, gives us more control over our fractures if this is the way that you want to use it. So in order to illustrate that, I'm going to use, I'm going to start, uh, start this all over again. It'll be super quick because it's, it's only a few nodes. So let's start off with our box and drop down a Boolean. Now we're going to slice it with our plane or with our grid. I want the same small grid size. Now I want several grids. I want more than one grid. So we can slice it up into, we're actually going to fracture it. So we want many, many, many pieces. And I'm going to copy this grid to a, to random points that I'm going to scatter all over this box. So let's throw down our ISO offset. Creates a volume. Now we're going to scatter points. Now this scatters points in the interior as well, but I don't need that many points. Let's start off with like two. Let's start with so something simple, just two. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Okay, there we go. So there's our two points. Now let's use our copy two points. Because we want, we have two points, we want two grids. So geometry to copy would be the grid. Okay, let me move this over here. And let me copy this over here we end up with two grids. This is not very useful because if I connect this as is, I also need an exploded so we know what the piece looks like. The Boolean, we need, again, A, geometry A, solid, geometry B would be a surface, and the operation is shatter because we want it in pieces. This is useless for a couple of reasons. I had two points, two grids, and I should at least see four slices of my cube. But the other point is placed right on the surface of the cube, so the grid isn't really slicing anything. I want different random points, so let's go back to the scatter node. So let's choose a different global seed. So we have two slices. This is exploding it way too big. Uh, let's try like... There. There we go. I just lowered the exploded scale so the grid cuts can be more visible. Now this still isn't very useful. Even though I use the bread and butter analogy, we're not actually making slices of bread. We need this cube to be fractured into tiny pieces. The cuts are way too flat. The grids are oriented in the same direction. Now, something cool about the copy two points is that it will use, it will inherit the normals. The copy two points will orient, will rotate the geometry being copied, which is our grid, by aligning it up with the normals on the points. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, I'm going to throw it on a attribute random node, attribute randomize mode. Let's, let's take a look at what we have here. Take out the template. Now I'm going to add normals to these points, random normals. So they're going to have normals pointing in uh, random directions. So 
select this uh, attribute randomize we're gonna attach a normals so we want the attribute name will be n that's what houdini recognizes as normals we're gonna attach it to the point distribution i'm gonna use gaussian normal gaussian so that's a pretty good randomizing algorithm now in order to visualize this let's turn on the normals here pointing in randomly we say we don't like these directions we want a different random uh, normal direction you can come over here to options global c so just play around with this number until you get something that you like okay that looks pretty good now let's put the render flag to the copy to points as you can see the grids are no longer parallel and they are rotated a bit the copy to points node is aligning the grid orientation with the normal vectors that were attached to the scatter points. So this is useful. I'm going to choose a different seat. Select the attribute randomize. Let's choose something. Okay, oh, let's do it differently. Let's put the render flag on the box. Template the grids. Now the grids don't look large enough to completely slice it. Now we want the grids to be extremely large so it'll cover the cube in all cases no matter where it's positioned. So let's increase the size. Let's take a look at what the boolean gives us. Uh, exploded view. Turn this up. Turn the distance up. So we're starting to see slicing. This is very useful. We can use this to fracture our geometry. However, this is th this is only two two grids. Just keep that in mind. We need more points to make this way more interesting. So it, it's time to turn up the number of scatter points. Let's go to 100. It'll take one second. Take a while. Okay, that's a lot of pieces. That may be a little too much. Uh, let me turn it down a bit. Let's go to like 20, maybe. Okay, that's that's more like it. Let's take a look at what the grids, uh, the planes look like. Our cutting planes, our cutters. This is our cutting planes that we're applying to cut this box, resulting in this. Now, let me turn this up so we can get a better look at the pieces. Please check out the next video where I talk about how to use the Boolean fracture geometry and port it into .NET simulations. I add noise displacement to make noisy edges in our fractures. I also compare Boolean fracturing with other traditional ways like Voronoi and material fracturing. At the end of the second video, I have a short demo on how I 3D model a PC monitor screen with the help of the Boolean node. Hopefully giving you an idea of how bullying can be used in procedural modeling.